This is Morpheus, my perfect media server. In the front, a bunch of hard drives, hot swappable, front loading. At the back, an SFP plus networking port for 10 gig connectivity. Inside is an i5-8500 CPU with 64 gigs of non-ECC memory. Workloads split across containers, virtualization, storage split across ZFS, and merger FS for all of my media server needs. However, my needs are changing and growing. I am starting to do a lot more virtualization stuff for work. Uh, I also want to have more redundant copies of my app data and all sorts of fun stuff. And the issue with using a consumer grade CPU in an application such as this is that you end up running out of PCIe lanes. Those are really important when you want to connect things like graphics cards, NVMe storage, and a bunch of other stuff to your system. So what we're going to do today is dig into Morpheus and some of the issues that I have behind it and hiding behind me on the bench over there is a little surprise. It's the AMD Epic 7402 CPU based system. So I've gone from having 16 PCIe lanes over here to 128 behind me. And we'll dig into all of that in today's video. Okay, so let's dig in and see what we've got. This is the Rosewell LSV 4500U. It cost me, I can't quite believe it, it cost me $50 about four years ago. Black Friday season was good in 2019. This one didn't come with the hot swap bays that I've added in the front here. So uh, this was just the bare bones case, the LSV 4500U. In it, over the years, I have put in a dual Xeon system and uh, it was an LGA 2011. And then most recently is this ASRock rack based motherboard, the E3 C246D4U. These model numbers just roll right off the tongue, don't they? All right, so let's take a little look at what we've got going on inside this case. And as I go, I'll try and explain why some of this is a problem. So we have a, a micro ATX motherboard inside here, the ASRock rack motherboard. Then I've got a NVMe card in the 16X slot at the top. I've got a 10 gig SFP plus network adapter in the next slot, which is a four by PCIe slot. And then in the bottom, I've got my HBA card, which again is another eight by PCIe Gen 3 card. Now on the face of it, this motherboard actually looks like it should be pretty much perfect for this application. However, the annoying thing is PCI switching and the, the number of lanes available on consumer platforms from Intel just isn't really good enough. So the CPU itself has 16 PCIe lanes. The motherboard chipset, which is where the other PCIe lanes come from, has I think 24 off the top of my head, but looking at the block diagram of the motherboard itself from ASRock, the chipset actually only uses nine PCIe lanes plus a few other things for like USB connectivity and connecting the BMC and that kind of stuff into the chipset, the, the C246 chipset. And so what we end up with is a situation where we just don't have enough PCIe lanes to, to support what's going on. For example, I have this card from ASUS. This thing lets me take a single PCIe slot, so a 16X slot, like the one you typically use for your graphics card, and add four NVMe SSDs in via that single slot. The catch is that it requires something called bifurcation built into your motherboard. By the way, this, this card is, is pretty cool, so just take a look at this bad boy. I can actually add, this is my old Steam Deck SSD, which is too short to actually reach even the first pin on this guy. But this is a Gen 3 card. I've actually got a Gen 4 one sat on the bench behind me ready to go for the epic build that's coming up. But I've got a 2TB um, 22110, so 110 mil long card here. A standard 22, was it 2280? Yeah, 80 mil long card. And then this one which goes from the Steam Deck, which is super small. But the idea is you take a single 16X slot using PCIe bifurcation and divide it up into four 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 by slots you know each of these m.2 slots gets four pcie lanes each which by the way is why these ssds are so fast they just have tons of bandwidth available to them so the, the idea was i wanted to put this card in the top slot of this motherboard and have two by two uh, terabytes with a couple of other nvme ssds that i found this one i actually found on serverbuilds.net this is a toshiba two terabyte data center grade, enter enterprise grade, uh, very high write endurance drive. 
But the first problem I found was that the bifurcation on the first slot of this motherboard only goes as granular as eight by four by four, whereas what I actually wanted was four by four by four by four. So what that would mean is that I could get these two slots here to show up as a single eight by slot, and then these two four by slots here are individual, individually addressable. The next problem came when I added in my SFP Plus card last year, which meant I had to move my HBA out of the top slot and put it in the bottom one down here. As soon as I do that, it activates a PCIe switch on the motherboard. That takes the first slot from being a single 16X slot, or a bifurcated slot if you so choose, and turns the first slot from a 16 into an 8, as well as the bottom one into an 8 as well. So it, it, in, in essence, what I ended up with was a mechanical 16X slot running as an 8X, a 4X, and another 8. Now that doesn't quite compute into the number of lanes available on the CPU. So the CPU presents 16 lanes, but then the chipset, as I say, presents a few more. So some of these slots are wired directly into the chipset and then they connect back to the CPU over the DMI bus or the interface, the DMI interface. Um, and it's, it's just not a great situation. I've kind of limped along. I say limped, it's, it's, a, it's a very good system. It's been very stable and I actually looked through my notes before making this video. I haven't actually taken the lid off this server in about a year, which should tell you just how stable it is. I mean, the only thing I've done is changed a couple of hard drives out on Black Friday at the front there. But for the most part, it's an incredibly reliable platform. You know, desktop grade CPUs or whatever, you know, they're great, <laughs> they hardly ever go wrong. But the real reason I've stuck with this platform for so long is Intel's QuickSync. Now I made a video about some QuickSync benchmarking scripts, which I do plan on getting to releasing a conclusion video about soon. But in the meantime, the reason I've stuck with this platform for so long is because of Intel's QuickSync. And that is a graphics card basically built into the CPU, which handles in hardware, all of my video transcoding needs for a budget of power budget of maybe 10 or 15 watts at most. When this thing's plugged into the wall, with all the hard drive spinning and all the PCIe devices lit up and everything, just sort of doing a, a, a baseline workload, I won't say idle, because I've got into trouble for that before, but just a baseline workload, it's pulling about 100-ish watts, give or take. And so my benchmark is, can I build a more powerful system to replace Morpheus with essentially unlimited PCIe bandwidth ex uh, expansion options, and come in somewhere close to that power budget. And so that is the crux of today's video. We're gonna take this consumer grade platform with its limited PCIe connectivity and upgrade to a proper server grade platform with all the PCIe lanes I probably need for, dare I say, the next decade. And so here it is, the solution to all life's problems. No, on this occasion, I'm not talking about beer. This is an AMD Epic based CPU based around their Roam architecture, so the Zen 2, version 2 of these chips. This comes from late 2019, and you can see here, we've got, <laughs> I think this board was probably designed by a psychopath, because notice the silk screening on the CPU chip is upside down. The, the way you should probably look at this board is this way up, right? And this, the writing on the CPU is upside down, but it doesn't affect the functionality. This board is an absolute gem. As you can see, it's got one, two, three, four, five 16X PCIe slots. It's got two 8X slots here, two NVMe slots here for NVMe drives, six SATA ports with two more down here. These six go into an LSI SAS controller, I believe. And this is a slim, SAS or Slim SATA, I think, connector. I'm gonna go into more detail on this board in the next video, because this is just a little teaser. I'm not actually doing the build in this video, otherwise it would be seven hours long. So what we're gonna do is just admire the beauty of this thing <laughs> for just a moment longer. The reason that this Roam platform is so exciting is just, I mean, 128 PCIe lanes. That means each of these slots can be individually bifurcated. So I could put one of those NVMe cards in each of these slots and get four, eight, 12, 16, 20 SSDs just here with two more there and then room for, I guess, four more between these two slots. There's obviously more you can do with PCIe than that, but you'll notice that one of the things that starts to become a limiting factor 
is rather than not having enough lanes, it's just not having enough space between the slots themselves. So this is a super micro H12 SSL-I motherboard, and it can support up to two terabytes of RAM, which is frankly kind of ridiculous. My spec is gonna be for 256 gigs of RAM. I've bought four sticks here with 64 gigs each. Uh, this should be plenty for now, 256 gigs. I mean, I'm, I'm coming up from 64, so it's gonna be a nice upgrade. The other thing to look at is the number of cores and threads on this chip. So this is the AMD Epic 7402, 24 cores, 48 threads. The clock speed's slightly slower than the Intel but there's a few niceties on this board as well. You know, I've got PCIe Gen 4 versus Gen 3. Obviously I've got a lot more cores to work with, so I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of the containerized workloads that I, I put through this thing and virtualization I put through this thing will benefit greatly from that multi-core architecture, being able to distribute the workload more evenly across the cores. But I think that will probably do us for today. I am going to go away and now start building the server that this goes in. I've got a Sliger case down there, which you'll see in the next video as well. And then the final video in this kind of mini series is going to be the HL15 from 45 Drives versus the Rosewill 4500U, which you saw earlier, versus the Sliger case that is, well, it's, it's sat over there ready to go, waiting. I haven't touched it yet, so I can't give you first impressions. Uh, so stick around, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until next time, I've been Alex from KTT Systems.